and I also replaced the fuel pressure regulator because the uh, old one is looking a little rough inside. Hey there, Kurt Curtis coming at you from the Full Octane Garage. And today, we're still trying to solve the problem of getting the 50 Chevrolet fired up and on the road. We've run into a couple of snags. The first snag we ran into was our belt was not lining up properly, our serpentine belt. Uh, our air conditioning compressor was jumping one tooth on the belt. We've changed AC brackets. We finally did some minor adjustments on the positioning of the AC bracket, and that seems to have solved that problem. Now the next problem we're having is we had uh, where the truck went idle. So we fired it up, we were getting a few codes, we were getting uh, random misfires. So we took the injectors off, we did our best to clean them, put the rails back on, did get some junk out of the injectors. This is an old intake that we're using. Uh, found a vacuum leak, uh, plugged that up, took it out, ran it. Uh, it seemed to run well, except for, well, not real well, but it, it still had a miss, uh, misfire on uh, cylinder five. So we're assuming that we have some still trash in the injectors. So I ordered a set of uh, refurbished injectors for 75 bucks off of eBay. We're gonna pull the intake manifold out and see if that fixes that problem. Originally, we would just pull the fuel rails off, but when we ran the truck, we were getting a, a fairly consistent oil leak coming out from the top rear of the engine. And I'm suspecting that the, uh, the, the tray underneath the uh, intake may have a bad gasket on it. So we're going to pull that apart, make sure everything looks good, inspect to make sure that's where the oil leak's coming from, seal it all back up, and give her another test. So y'all hang in there with us, and uh, we'll be back shortly. Okay, we're back at you. We're, we have removed all of the old fuel injectors, and basically what there is, there's a little snap ring on each one of these that holds these in place so that the pressure of the fuel does not push them out. So they, they have an O-ring that holds them in. Actually, I was on the wrong side, this side actually. Uh, O-ring holds in, uh, so they will just slip in and out. Uh, what we do before we put the new ones in, and as I mentioned, we found uh, a set of refurbished, uh, fully tested fuel injection injectors, uh, a set of eight. We found on eBay for $75 with a five-year warranty on them. Uh, so we're going to see how good they really are. Um, you know, the, the injector uh, looks quite clean. Uh, they've uh, got these dust caps. They have all brand new O-rings. What we're going to do is put a little bit of grease on these O-rings uh, just so they slip in a little bit easier, not a lot, just a real light coat. And we're going to go through and put all of these back in. We're going to put the clip rings back on to help make sure that they're held in properly. And then we're going to come back and we're going to mount it back on top of the intake before we install the intake. And these install actually with the wire facing outward because the wire injector wire plug is going to come in from the outside of these rails. You want to make sure where you're pulling these caps off. The open end is the one that goes into the rail because the small with the small little orifices is actually the injector squirter. That's what squirts into the intake. And once we get all these set in place, we'll come back and we'll put the trim rings on, the, the trim clips that hold them in place. And they go in quite easy, especially when you have new O-rings. The uh, older O-rings uh, tend to be a little brittle. Um, I did reuse some of the old ones when I took the injectors out to clean them the first time and they didn't work and uh, the o-rings were definitely brittle and uh, chipped as I put them back in so uh, new o-rings and they did leak a little bit so uh, it'll be quite apparent when you put some fuel pressure on these if the o-rings pinched or crimped 
definitely don't want that. You'll want to listen for any hissing when you turn the ignition switch on and the fuel pump fires for the first time. Uh, the rails will be dr very dry um, in the event when fuel is trying to fill it, it will displace any air and if there is any leakage around these seals you will definitely hear air hissing out of these you want to turn the ignition key off immediately. And what started all this I think I, I explained in an earlier uh, portion of this video is um, we were getting a misfire on uh, cylinder 5 is what the code was telling me and once we got that misfire code we couldn't seem to get it cleaned up so we figured yeah maybe we've got a clogged injector we're willing to give it a $75 fix if we can the old injectors looked a little rough anyways uh, so I don't feel bad about putting some tested injectors in this Now this is where it, it gets interesting because um, you'll you'll see that the there's a, a, a very apparent area on the rail where these will slip into, um, and there's a, an apparent place uh, where the rings will actually uh, set in here to hold it in place. It's a tight fit. It'll be a little tricky to get in sometimes. And if you don't get it in right, they all go flying across the room. I should actually be wearing some eye protection. Okay. And once they're in, you should not be able to pull that injector out. Here's the eye protection. You absolutely do not want to put these clips in wrong, because if you put them in wrong, uh, an injector could shoot out um, if the rail's not snug and tight, and you will have a massive fuel leak when the pump comes on. So definitely want to be careful and, and cautious when you're doing these. And my clip flew. And you'll see very clearly uh, that these clips are on. They will spin around, not a problem, um, but you will see an area where the, uh, the edge of the clip will fit through this little V here, um, so it'll be pretty apparent. So now what we'll do is we'll set this aside and we'll go grab the intake. Now we know that the the fuel source comes in on the driver's side, so this is the driver's side over here, so we will put these on this way. And before we put these in, what we're going to do is, again, we're going to take just a little bit of grease and, and loop these O-rings up, just ever so slightly, because we want them to slide into the intake very nice and easy. want to make sure not to touch the ends of the injectors with any of this grease, because you don't want to clog them in any way. Now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to line these injector holes up and set them in. They drop in very nicely. When they drop in very nicely, you'll see when they're set in there. Four screws that hold the rails in. And you want to make sure these injectors and the rails are seated properly so that you don't have any uh, any vacuum leakage coming in or any fuel leakage leaving. And if you're dealing with an old intake like I am, um, when I had this thing out initially, I noticed that there was some debris in the rails, debris in the injectors. Um, I went ahead and, as a precaution, um, two things. Uh, I replaced this, uh, this particular hose, which goes to the fuel pressure regulator. And I also replaced the fuel pressure regulator because the uh, old one was looking a little rough inside. Um, they weren't very expensive 
28 30 bucks something like that um, just to make sure you have the proper fuel regulation it was well worth the extra money okay we're going to mount this back on the truck and then we're going to uh, see if it has any fuel leaks and then we're going to fire it up and hopefully our missing uh, misfire in cylinder 5 will go away okay we're back we've got the valley tray out of the 5.3 and when we pulled it out, we found out a couple of things. Uh, one of the very important things is um, these are the uh, knock sensor wires, and it was not very apparent how we're supposed to remove the knock sensor wires. So our first shot at it turned into something that looked like this, where we basically destroyed one of our knock sensors. But not to worry, this knock sensor if you look at the perimeters of this knock sensor, the uh, it's very pitted and rusted. So we were probably uh, in a little better position to go ahead and replace this anyways. It was looking a little worn. But just to let you know, uh, the connectors look something like this. And you have to actually, with a pair of pliers or needle nose, is bend them out like that so that they'll disconnect from the top lip of this knock sensor. A normal knock sensor should look like this and have a lip for the uh, air, the little clips to clip onto. And the only way to get it off is to squeeze really hard and then it will pull off. Now, so that was a $49 mistake. So now we have a new $49 lot, um, uh, knock sensor. Uh, we got this at Advanced Auto. We went online and actually uh, usually when you go to Advanced Auto and buy something online and then go pick it up in the store, uh, almost every time they give you a 20% discount. So uh, we got this for $49 minus 20%, so it wasn't as painful. Uh, but the one thing is when we, when we did get the, uh, the tray out, uh, which is basically the, the Nox, this, goes over, this is the center uh, cover that goes over the Vortec and in here is where your knock sensors sit and then what your wires have this uh, nice little protective boot that kind of seals them from uh, anything we pulled ours out and we noticed that this is what a good rubber boot should look like and this goes down inside uh, around uh, a portion of the block this is what we pulled out and you'll see that the hole that we've totally lost a, a whole section here of the rubber boot it just was left in the motor so what we did uh, we wanted to replace these two little seals unfortunately we cannot find a way to replace these two little seals without buying the whole kit so you get a whole new seal and two of these small items for a mere $28 where if you could have bought these two items, and I'll probably shop around some more, um, they probably would have been about three or four bucks a piece. So now to taking these out. Um, they are kind of uh, pressed in there. So what we do is we get our handy screwdriver and knock those out, and they are gone. So now what we do on the new ones I am hopeful that they just kind of tap back in there. Okay, not so bad. Okay, we'll get number two. That is a new seal. Now what we'll do is we'll uh, actually put a little bit of grease on these so that they'll slide down nice and easy back into the uh, the, the uh, engine valley. Uh, we will. We also identified that when we we picked up this motor used from a, a friend of mine, and he must have switched out the valley cover because uh, I just assumed that he had torqued everything down. We fired the engine up and there was a pretty significant engine oil leak coming out from the back of this valley. Uh, fought it for a little bit, wasn't sure what it was, 
then once we opened up and took the intake off, uh, we realized that all of the bolts, except for the four outers, were not tightened, so they were all loose. So got a little bit of uh, blow by, got a little bit of oil coming out. So uh, we'll put the new gasket in. Uh, we will put the new knock sensors in, or at least one new knock sensor. The other one didn't look too bad, so we're gonna keep it. And then we will put the intake back on and we're hopeful that the oil leaks are gone. We also picked up some new fuel injectors, actually refurbished fuel injectors. So we'll talk a little bit about installing those here in a minute. Uh, right now we're gonna go put this back on and uh, we'll be back at you in a few minutes. Okay, we've got the intake all back on the truck. Everything's back in place. Everything's all wired in. All the vacuum lines are hooked up. All the throttle linkages are hooked up. The intake's all hooked up. Next, we'll roll the truck outside fire it up and see what happens. All right, we've got the new injectors in, we've got uh, the intake back on, we've got everything buttoned up, and we're gonna try take number three.